Hello, this is Off The World. If you enjoy our videos, don't forget to hit that like button for more. Join us on our weekly journey through time and history. Today, we are going on a captivating voyage to explore the rich and diverse history of the Kingdom of Morocco. From its deep-rooted origins to its modern evolution, we will delve into the different eras that have shaped this vibrant nation. But before we venture into the heart of the Berber kingdoms, let's take a moment to appreciate the breathtaking beauty of Morocco's landscape. From the sun-drenched Sahara to the windswept beaches of the Atlantic and Mediterranean, from the snow-capped Atlas Mountains to the bustling souks of Marrakesh and Fez, Morocco is a land of contrasts. Its diverse geography is a testament to its rich history, a melting pot of cultures and traditions. So buckle up as we embark on this exciting journey, tracing the footsteps of the proud Berber tribes, the resilient Islamic conquerors, the imposing European colonizers, and the forward-looking Moroccans of the present day. Let's rewind the clock and travel back to a time when the first Berber tribes roamed the land, laying the foundations of the Kingdom of Morocco. Welcome to the dawn of time in Morocco. Ever wondered how the Kingdom of Morocco came to be? Let's journey back to the beginning, to the Berber kingdoms. Now imagine, if you will, a time around 2000 years before Christ, when the Berber kingdoms were first established. These proud and independent tribes roamed the rugged landscapes of North Africa, from the Sahara's sandy stretches to the Atlas Mountains' rocky peaks. The Berbers, or Amazi as they prefer to be called, meaning free people, were the original architects of Moroccan culture. The Berber's world was a patchwork of kingdoms and tribes, each with its own unique traditions and customs, and yet they shared a common thread, a deep-rooted sense of identity and a fierce love for their homeland. Enter stage left, the Carthaginians, a mighty maritime power from across the Mediterranean. Around the 6th century BC, they began establishing settlements along the Moroccan coast, but rather than a conquest, this was more of a cultural exchange. The Berbers traded their gold, ivory and ostrich feathers for the Carthaginians' goods and ideas, leading to an enriching blend of cultures. Then came the Romans, striding onto the scene with their vast empire. They had a grand vision to incorporate the Berber kingdoms into their sprawling realms, but the Berbers, they weren't ones to be tamed easily. They resisted the Roman control with a spirit as unyielding as the mountains they called home. Despite the Romans' repeated attempts to seize control, many Berber tribes remained fiercely independent, giving the Romans a run for their money, so to speak. It was a classic tale of the underdog braving the odds, a testament to the Berbers' indomitable spirit. The Roman rule, though intermittent, did leave its mark on the Berber kingdoms. It influenced their architecture, language and trade, shaping the course of their history. Yet, through it all, the Berbers held on to their unique culture and identity, a testament to their resilience. And so, the Berber kingdoms, ever resilient, set the stage for the coming of a new power, Islam. In the 7th century, a new force swept across North Africa, Islam. A powerful wave of change, driven by the Arab Umayyad Caliphate, began to roll over Morocco. This wasn't just a military conquest, it was a cultural and religious transformation that would forever alter the landscape of this vibrant region. The Umayyads, hailing from the Arabian Peninsula, brought with them a revolutionary religion that promised unity under one God and one faith. The local Berber tribes, with their diverse pantheon of gods and traditions, found themselves caught in the winds of this monumental shift. Yet resistance was not the order of the day. In fact, the Berbers largely embraced Islam, finding a resonance with its teachings of equality, brotherhood and monotheism. But the Umayyad's reign was not to last. Their downfall came in the form of a Berber rebellion, fueling the rise of the Idrisid dynasty. The Idrisids, founded by Idris I, a descendant of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, took the mantle of leadership in the late 8th century. This marked the birth of the first indigenous Islamic dynasty in Morocco. The Idrisids were instrumental in not only consolidating Islam in Morocco, but also in promoting the Arabic culture. They established Fez as their capital, which blossomed into a beacon of Islamic and Arabic scholarship. Under their rule, mosques sprang up, Quranic schools flourished, and Arabic became the lingua franca, replacing the native Berber languages. Yet the Idrisids' influence went beyond the borders of Morocco. They played a pivotal role in spreading Islam further into sub-Saharan Africa, 
carrying with them the rich tapestry of Arabic language and culture. Their reign, however, was not eternal. The Idrisids eventually fell to rival dynasties, but their legacy lived on. They had laid the foundation of an Islamic Morocco shaping the cultural, religious and political landscape of the region. With the Idrisid dynasty, the stage was set for a series of Islamic dynasties that would shape Morocco's future. The story of Morocco is a tale of many chapters, and the Islamic conquest was undoubtedly a defining one. But as history teaches us, it was only the beginning of the fascinating journey that is Morocco's past. From the 11th to the 19th century, Morocco was ruled by a series of dynasties known as the Imperial Era. Picture this, a 500-year-long royal relay race where the baton is a kingdom and the track is the sands of time. First off, the blocks were the Almoravids, who sprinted onto the scene in the 11th century. They were a tough bunch, known for their military prowess, but they weren't all about brandishing the sword. They also had a soft spot for architecture and culture, fostering the growth of Andalusian arts and building the Kutubia Mosque, which stands tall to this day. Next up, the Almohads took the baton in the 12th century. They ran a strict race, imposing a puritanical form of Islam, but they also had an artistic side. They gifted Morocco the architectural marvels of the Giralda and the Hassan Tower. The third leg of the race saw the Marinids take over in the 13th century. They were the intellectuals of the lot, establishing the world-renowned University of al Oini in Fez. They also loved a good party, celebrating their victories with grand festivals. The Sardians were next in line, sprinting through the 16th and 17th centuries. They left their mark with the opulent El Badi Palace, a testament to their love for luxury and power. Finally, the Alawites grabbed the baton in the 17th century and they're still running with it today. They've had their fair share of hurdles from European interference to internal conflicts, but they've managed to keep Morocco's identity intact, preserving its rich culture and traditions. The imperial era was a period of great cultural and political development, but it was also a time of conflict and change. The baton has been passed, the race continues, and the story of Morocco's imperial era remains etched in the sands of time. The 19th and 20th centuries brought a new challenge to Morocco, European colonialism. The face of Morocco was about to undergo a dramatic transformation as the winds of European influence swept across the land. At the dawn of the 20th century, Morocco found itself in the crosshairs of French and Spanish imperial ambitions. The French, with their eyes on the fertile regions of the north and the Spanish coveting the strategic coastline, established protectorates over different parts of Morocco. Now imagine two guests at a dinner party who can't agree on who gets the last piece of cake that was France and Spain in Morocco. The French protectorate established in 1912 brought with it a wave of modernization. Infrastructure, education and the economy underwent significant changes. But this was a double-edged sword. While the French brought development, they also imposed strict controls and exploited Morocco's resources. On the other side, the Spanish protectorate was a patchwork of territories in the north and south. The Spanish were less interested in development and more focused on strategic control. But as they say, all good things must come to an end. And so did the Spanish and French reign in Morocco. The struggle for independence was a turbulent period marked by nationalistic fervor and an unyielding spirit of resilience. The Moroccans, tired of being pawns in a European game, began to push back. The spark of revolt was ignited and the flame of resistance spread across the country. In 1956, after years of struggle, Morocco finally shrugged off the chains of colonialism. The establishment of the modern Kingdom of Morocco marked a new chapter in the nation's history. It was like a phoenix rising from the ashes of colonial rule, ready to soar into a future of its own making. Despite the challenges of colonialism, Morocco emerged in the mid-20th century as an independent nation, ready to forge its own path. From the mid-20th century to today, Morocco has continued to evolve and grow. The reigns of Kings Mohammed V, Hassan II and Mohammed VI have seen significant changes in the nation's political, economic and cultural landscapes. 
Mohammed V's reign marked the end of French and Spanish colonial rule and the dawn of independence. His tireless efforts towards sovereignty made him a beloved figure among his people. His son, Hassan II, ascended the throne in 1961, steering Morocco through the turbulent waters of the Cold War and regional conflicts. His reign was marked by both progress and controversy, but his vision for a modern Morocco remained undeterred. With the passing of Hassan II in 1999, his son, Mohammed VI, took the helm. Known as the Cool King, Mohammed VI has ushered in an era of reform and modernization. He has sought to balance tradition with progress, implementing political reforms to encourage greater democracy and human rights. Economically, Morocco has seen substantial growth under his reign. With a focus on diversifying the economy, the nation has expanded into sectors such as manufacturing, telecommunications and renewable energy. Tourism too has flourished, with Morocco becoming a top destination for travellers seeking a taste of its rich history and vibrant culture. Culturally, Morocco continues to thrive. Its ancient traditions coexist with modern trends, creating a dynamic and diverse society. From the enchanting music of Nawa to the thriving contemporary art scene, Morocco is a melting pot of old and new. From its Berber roots to its modern monarchy, Morocco's rich history is a testament to its resilience and adaptability. Who knows what the future holds for this fascinating nation? Um, before we conclude, we'd like to extend an invitation for you to join us on more incredible journeys. If you've enjoyed this expedition through Morocco's rich history from its ancient Berber roots to its modern monarchy, then you'll surely love the histories we'll be exploring next. We're traveling far and wide across continents and through time to bring you the stories of nations around the globe, from the mighty empires of ancient civilizations to the dynamic societies of the modern era, there's a world of history waiting to be discovered. So what are you waiting for? Join us on this exciting journey through time by hitting that subscribe button. Together, we'll uncover the past, understand the present and anticipate the future. Stay tuned for more and as always, thank you for watching.